people that are here are the important people, and we should get started. Okay, good morning, everybody. We on air? On air. Welcome to the Trade, Commerce, and Tourism Committee. I am Councilmember Janice Hahn, and I am joined by, oh, nobody. So let's begin with item number one. It's an airport item. Under item one, the Board of Airport Commissioners submits for approval the Fourth Amendment to the uh, a lease with Continental Airlines for operation of an aircraft maintenance facility at LAX. Hmm. The amendment would delete land and improvements from the leasehold for return to Los Angeles World Airports and would extend the term for three years hmm. to expire on May 31st, 2013. The CAO has submitted a report and a recommendation for approval of the lease amendment. Okay, tell me what this is. Yes, good morning, Ramon Olivares with uh, LAWA. This item is really the culmination of a long uh, process related to all the construction projects going on at, um, at uh, LAX with respect to the taxiways and the Tom Bradley terminal project. Uh, this item actually is one of the more critical pieces of those projects, and it has to do with uh, our ability to gain control of land that we need to control, I mean, to, uh, to construct the new fire station on airport. Ah. Uh, it also provides, of course, for um, a three-year extension for, um, for Continental. So basically this does what? What this does basically is that, number one, it extends the, uh, the Continental uh, lease right. three additional years, and it allows us uh, to take back certain property from Continental, part of which we will utilize to continue construction of the new fire station, which, by the way, is already in construction okay. and is scheduled to be completed this year. In addition to that, we'll be taking back from Continental additional um, land and uh, building space, uh, which then LAWA will use uh, uh, to, uh, to lease to other uh, tenants. Okay. So in a nutshell, that's what the, uh, the, what the amendment and the, this item is about. Okay. Mark? You got it. <laughs> Anything you want to add? Uh, Mark Adams, Los Angeles World Airports. No, it's about 14 acres we're taking back. And... Um, that land, um, we're, we're having to move a lot of, not just the fire station, but move a lot of tenants around on the airport to accommodate the new construction. And this is the first piece of the puzzle. You'll probably see some other leases coming down the road as we move, move tenants around. Now, there, was there an in environmental contamination issue with, uh, between Law and Continental Airlines? And has that been resolved? Uh, yes, there is uh, in, some environmental um, concerns regarding uh, contamination on the continental property. In fact, that is the reason, the primary reason why this is an amendment today as opposed to a new lease. Uh, originally, we started uh, or right, embarked. To have a new lease. Yeah, but we couldn't the settle. The negotiations have been. Right, we couldn't settle on how okay. to handle the contamination, so we decided basically to kick the can uh, down okay. the street uh, through, the, uh, through an amendment. And so how will this ultimately be resolved, or will it? Well, we're, we're hopeful that it will be resolved, and we're all already beginning to uh, uh, negotiations with Continental regarding the resolution of, uh, of the what contamination. What kind of uh, contamination are we talking about? Fuel. Mm -hmm. And so what re remediation is, is, con is Continental already providing some? The, uh, Continental does have a number of wells on the property, uh, on its property, mm -hmm. as well as on uh, Lawa property uh, mm -hmm. uh, to, uh, in an effort to clean up the, uh, the soil. But there are still unresolved issues regarding some plumes underground and, uh, of course, the issue of who's responsible, who's liable. Who's How do we clear. resolve that? Eventually, I, well, hopefully we can resolve it through, uh, through negotiations, but ultimately a, a, it may end up in the courts, of that's course. It, that's up, it's up to the attorneys at the end of the day. Okay. I mean, Continental's been using this facility for 30 years for, right. for maintenance. Right. So, so there's going to be... There's been a lot of stuff going on there. And, right. You know, they obviously we feel that they have a, an obligation to clean up their mess. Right. Okay. Um, all right. Um, I, I think that's, that's all. I would I'd just point out also that Ramon mentioned that the fire station's already under construction. We're just taking the land back on the lease now. We, we got a right of entry permit last year that allowed us to go in to start the construction. And is the contamination us. issue where the fire station is being? No, no. It, no where, it's, it's, okay, it's, what will be where the contamination issue is? Uh, you mean what is located where the contamination is? Yeah, what do we plan to locate uh, there? At the, at the moment, um, uh, much of the contamination is, uh, is underground. 
um, and it's outside the continental leasehold. Okay. Uh, and some of it is in the, is below the um, the facility that that continental operates, but it's underground. There's a plume, evidently. Right. Uh, the groundwater. Uh, right. Eventually, uh, long term, uh, that facility is fairly old. Uh, that facility will probably have to be uh, removed and reconstructed in mm -hmm. some form. Uh, years down the road, it's a fairly old facility. And at that point, does the contamination issue have to be resolved? I'm just trying to figure out how, how, how we resolve this, ultimately. Well, uh, I'm not an environmental journal, right. nor am I envi an, an environmental expert, but my understanding is that ultimately we may end up, uh, provided we meet all the uh, regulatory requirements, is leave the contamination in the soil. And uh, I mean, it, this is an airport. It's an operating airport. Mm -hmm. And uh, ultimately, it may be okay with the regulatory agencies mm. to pave over the, um, the, uh, the contamination. And utilize it for aircraft parking or some other purpose. Okay. okay. We got NRDC sitting in the audience. They're going to like this one. Okay. Um, I have uh, a public comment on this one. Arnold Sachs. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Good morning. Thank you. The mm -hmm. uh, reason I left is because when they mentioned that the fire station was under construction, I was wondering if Continental was aware, but they said they had it right away. Um, but that would be on the west side of the airport, I guess, off of uh, Pershing, Pershing Road by the, by the El Segundo Blue Butterfly Habitat, um, heading east into the airport. So I was wondering, is that contamination in the area that was part of the um, master plan for the midfield concourse, which is not going to be built now. We don't know what the status is on that, but we know it's a beautiful looking building because the architects showed it in their plans, or they showed it in the model. And again, that was no access for the planes to park there. So I was just wondering, did Continental actually know that the fire station was going to be built there, and was there some kind of negotiation that involved, we'll give up the land in, in lieu of some of these environmental rights, and you can build your fire station there, because that's the unheard message that's gotten here. Thank you. Okay, so uh, there's only one of me here, so we just can move it. Send it as a communication, but if another council member comes in, then uh, you could revisit it. Okay. Via All right. Let's take item two. Oh, uh, oh. Madam Chair, are you approving or what's the deal? Yes, okay. approving. Under item two, the Board of Harbor Commissioners submits for council approval a revolving loan agreement with Union Bank N.A. to establish a revolving credit facility in an amount not to exceed $60 million for a period of two years. The CAO has submitted a report and recommendation for approval of this agreement with Union Bank. All right, what are we doing here? Uh, uh, Carl Pan good with uh, Good Morning with the Port of Los Angeles. What we're doing is establishing a line of credit uh, for a short term relatively for two years with Union Bank to allow the port to obtain access to funds if necessary. Uh, the reason this came about was traditionally the port had uh, a letter of, credit pro uh, letter of credit program supporting our commercial paper program. Mm -hmm. But as you may remember, a year and a half, two years ago, the commercial paper program commercial paper market uh, was really tight and uh, we just wanted to find an alternative source of funding just in case uh, at any particular time the port needed funds to draw against. So this is a line of credit? It's a line up of credit. Up to 60 million? Up to 60 million. Correct. And it lasts for how long? Two years. Two years. Correct. And if you borrow in that time, um, what's the terms? Uh, we can borrow up to 180 days. Up to, uh, days. up to 180 days, the, the interest rate would be set against what's known as LIBOR, or the London Interbank Offered Rate. The, uh, the overall amount of fees uh, right now would be cheaper than if we had uh, th than a commercial paper program. Okay. But uh, because it's borrowing from the bank, certainly the amount uh, generally is not as large as what we could uh, enjoy if there was a more regular commercial paper market. And today, the commercial paper market seems to have somewhat recovered, so we'll be exploring that well, as well. So what are, what's our thinking? What, what, what are we thinking of that we are going to use it, that we're going to borrow it? For, uh, for no, what it, purpose? Y y no, it's, it's a safety net just in case our normal daily working capital needs okay. may or may not uh, 
you know, the cash flows may not fit at that particular time, so we would draw against the facility. If we drew, okay. uh, we would look to pay it back, certainly. What kinds of things can you borrow? Can you borrow for any purpose? Yes, for any this purpose. one, for any purpose, correct. Cash flow? Uh, that's correct, yes. Okay. Um, why Union Bank? Uh, well, uh, we had asked a lot of different banks as mm -hmm. to uh, whether they would be willing to offer such a facility. And at that particular time, um, I think municipal entities, a lot of banks weren't very familiar with dealing with municipal entities, and traditionally municipal entities tend to draw, uh, borrow in the commercial paper market. Mm -hmm. So not a lot of banks responded favorably. Hmm. We'll remember that. Yes, we will. Um, what's, uh, um, how are the credit agencies viewing the port these days? Uh, they view us reasonably favorably. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I think uh, with a recent. Uh, what's our uh, What's your current bond rating? Uh, we are double A uh, with all three rating agencies. I, I think with a recent uh, volume recovery of container counts, mm -hmm. they're feeling a little better. When we borrowed in the bond markets last year, they had uh, assigned a stable outlook to us uh, mm -hmm. with our double A. So mm -hmm. uh, so far, it's still reasonable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but. Um, uh, certainly, they are looking at the general industry and all the associated industries, I think, uh, with a very close eye. Mm -hmm. Okay. CAO's office recommend approval. Okay. Anything else? No, I'm fine. Okay. Sounds good. Um, Thank you. And again, it's, it's short term, two years. Uh, and at this point, you're not even sure whether you're going to use it, but it's there if you need to. That's correct. Yes. Yes. Lines of credit. Yes. Always good. But, um, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll recommend this for approval. Thank you very much. Thank okay. you. All right, item three. Under item three, the Board of Harbor Commissioners submits to this committee on behalf of the Natural Resources Defense Council a report on the proposed request for proposals and scope of the initial study of off-port health and land use impacts on Wilmington and San Pedro. And this is in accordance with the MOU that was executed in April 2008 by the Harbor Department and a number of environmental, labor, and homeowner advocacy groups mm -hmm. led by the NRDC, among others. Great. I love this because this is like the second thing that's starting to move forward based on our TRAPAC MOU. Um, last week we approved the, uh, some of the first year projects uh, of air filtration in the school. And this is another. Um, effort that came out of uh, the MOU. So who would like to describe this to me? Um, Councilwoman Mike Christensen from Harbor Department. Um, I'll just open it up by uh, prefacing this. As you had mentioned, this is the second early action item that mm -hmm. we're bringing to, uh, to the Council for approval. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one was the uh, retrofit of the school uh, mm -hmm. filtration systems. Mm -hmm. This is, um, is a study that was laid out in the MOU to, uh, to do an initial look at the um, off-port impacts, the nexus between port operations and impacts within the communities. And um, uh, with the Harbor Department, are, are very glad to bring this to you. Um, we would like to uh, introduce uh, Adrian Martinez with the NRDC. Uh, while this, uh, the RFP process that was going to um, uh, get this consultant on board, uh, was going to be done under the interim entity, we've, we're kind of pushing this forward a little more quickly. So uh, the appellants are doing this uh, themselves, and NRDC is taking a leadership role with the appellants to do that. And with that, I think I'll turn it over to Adrian, and he can give you uh, a glimpse of right. the scope of this uh, study. Uh, proposed study. Okay, good. Hi, Thank Adrian. You. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so I think Mike did a good job uh, giving the background of the MOU, but um, what we specifically want to move forward on is a two-part study, and the first part is to look at the land use uh, impacts from port operations and port tenant operations um, on the communities of Wilmington and San Pedro. And it's going to be, um, the idea is to make it a pretty user-friendly um, report that will be a good tool for the city, for the port, for um, residents in the community, and also ultimately uh, whatever entity is set up to administer the TRAPAC funds. So the idea being to get a glimpse of what types of impacts provide, um, you know, areas that are particularly impacted and help them direct funds for, um, 
for spending mitigation funds. The second component is really just uh, looking at the health um, issues. There's a lot. Of, there are a lot of studies that have been released, and it's a pretty um, robust amount of information out there on the um, impacts from air pollution related to port operations. So the idea behind the study is to use some of those existing tools, kind of compile it, and then um, and provide how this fits into port operations um, and how this is impacting Wilmington and San Pedro residents. And the idea is to help um, also identify the health-related uh, mitigation and help provide direction on how the funds should be spent. The idea is it will be a three-month uh, study, and we're going to do a competitive process with RFP. We're going to um, rely on some experts to help us select consultants, and we're working with the city um, to release the request for proposal, so we'll go out to a broad range, and we hope that we'll have a lot of good applicants, and we hope we can get this going quickly because I think it's a very important piece, and uh, agencies from the State Lands Commission to the port have been very interested in what um, this study will ultimately say and, you know, right. the study itself. Right. Um, do, do, um, so when do we think this RFP will be on the street, so to speak? Our hope is to get it done in the next uh, two weeks. We're working mm -hmm. on some of the final language, okay. and so we have a pretty active. Staff. And are there consultants out there that have already begun to express interest and that are that know how to do this? I mean, this is this kind of groundbreaking, kind of a, a first to um, engage this kind of study of off-port. I'm not impacts? aware of any study that's looked at both the health and the land, and use. land use. I think there are certain institutions that are good at each one, so it may be some combination. There may oh, be okay. some firms that can do okay. both as well, but I okay. think you're right. It is it is an important piece because this has been kind of a gap in understanding in how the port impacts the community of San Pedro and Wilmington. Right. Um, what about, and I don't know if this is a question for Tom or not, but clearly state lands um, uh, it has to be engaged in this and sort of has to, you know, kind of be okay with this. How are we how are we engaging them on this? State Lands has, this is Tom Russell, General Counsel, Port of LA. State Lands has been uh, paying very close attention to our mm -hmm. implementation of the Trade Pack sure MOU. Um, <clears throat> we've had a cooperative relationship with them up until now, and mm -hmm. we can we believe that will continue. Mm -hmm. um, they have been okay with the idea of a $300,000 off-port impact mm -hmm. study, and in fact have encouraged uh, mm -hmm. those who are interested in spending port funds to demonstrate a nexus, and the purpose of of a study like this is to show a nexus between impacts of the port and port uh, mitigation measures. And so the mitigation measures contemplated by the Trade Pack MOU will be supported by this study. And I think to that extent the State Lands Commission will find it very useful. Good, because this really, as you described, it's a, it's a small study. I mean, it's, it's uh, how much is it? $300,000. $300, so the scope is probably smaller than some would have um, hoped for in, say, a $5 million study. Uh, but still, I think it, it does lay um, the groundwork for that very important nexus because it, show, it would show that it is perfectly legal under state lands to mitigate uh, some of these uh, port impacts, which I think the port you know, has always wanted to do and has always been willing to do, but has been stopped because we can't prove be, you know, beyond a reasonable doubt that there actually is a connection, and this study hopefully will finally show that. And state lands has always been ob ob objecting when we attempt to do that because there is no nexus proof. Uh, right? Additionally, there will be another study down the road of $300,000, and that will focus on uh, aesthetics, light, glare, traffic, public safety, and effects of vibration, recreation, and cultural resources. So it's a, it's a slightly different study, but it will be also funded by the same MOU, and it will also uh, be useful. There will be another places. 300. Uh, Correct. Oh, okay. There are two separate studies. Okay. That one is contemplated uh, after the ultimate nonprofit or whatever entity is agreed to be formed uh, to administer the trade pack funds. After that entity is up and running, then at that point we'll have the second study come in. Okay. Um, well, I think this is very important, and um, it's great to see, you know, all of you sitting at the same table today working together um, and moving forward in what I think will be a, a very important study. And I really want to thank Adrian and really all the appellants who, um, and, and the port for really coming together on this uh, MOU to provide uh, opportunities 
like this um, to move forward and um, I, I think make for ultimately a healthier and happier surrounding community and a, a more successful port, I think, in the long run. And thank you, Councilwoman, for getting this uh, ball rolling. My, my pleasure. Uh, anything else? Um, we're working forward, looking forward to uh, working with Mission Infrastructure to, uh, and in fact, I have a meeting with uh, their council later today. Now this and is the umbrella group that. This is the umbrella that group that is it, that is going to be implementing the whole program. Right. Right. And uh, we're very excited about uh, some of the things that are we're going to be doing uh, in connection with this this MOU. Good. I am too, and I really it it uh, it's so. Um, personally meaningful to me uh, to have both these projects be coming forward. I mean, uh, it seemed like things were slow, you know, getting forward, but this is groundbreaking and this is huge. Uh, but I think ultimately, again, I really believe this will allow our port to continue to grow um, and be the economic engine in our community, provide good jobs. Uh, but I think finally we're going to have a way to um, make sure uh, that we're allowed to mitigate some of these um, off-port impacts. I think this is going to be historic and important for, for all of us. So thank you all for working on this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I do have a card on this. Arnold Sachs. Oh, I've got to ask for updates. Okay. Very interesting. Um, it is, the, isn't the it? appellant moving forward. That's not the port and that's not the state land, right? That would be the other member of the MOU. So they are the ones proposing the RFP, the appellate, I'm, I'm imagining. And the, the second speaker of the company, it's not the port or the, or the, or the state land that's proposing the MOU, we're proposing the RFPs. It's the appellate. So what they want to study is going to be what's good for them. The second survey, who's going to propose that, MO, that RFP? Will that be proposed by the port setting up conditions or the state setting up conditions? No, that will also be proposed by the appellate probably, maintaining the conditions they want to see happen. So it's important here to listen to the language that's been spoken and understand that the people who are receiving the benefits are proposing the studies. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and I uh, want to make sure that um, we can have um, updates in this committee. Like, I'd love to, um, you know, have, uh, you know, when a consultant has been, when the RFP goes out, we'd like to know about it. When the consultant is selected, we'd like to know about it. So we'd just like to keep updates on, on this important project. Okay. Um, we're, this, our recommendation is to receive and file the NRDC's report. Is that correct? Good. Okay, I have uh, one more public comment, general public comment, before we adjourn. Look how good I do by myself without these guys, you know, adding to the discussion. Okay, Arnold Sachs, just kidding, Thank Tom you. and Bill. Um, will these matters, since there's no uh, quorum here, will these matters be appearing before the city council? Uh, this, these matters uh, will go before the city council scheduled as a communication. Okay. So. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, it was an interesting story in, in the LA Times. I don't know if you heard about it, and it got me uh, thinking that Laura Richardson had um, purloined two fire department helicopters to take her, her crew, her staff, on tours of LA. And so with a budget crunch, and they gr gratis. One was from the city and one was from the county. So I thought, Maybe, as a tourism, aid to tourism, the city's police and fire department can offer tours. tours to the public. And if you get involved in a car chase or a crime scene or something to that effect, you pay more. Any way to make money, I think it's a darn good idea. Thank you. Thank oh, and Supervisor Antonovich was very impressed with his recent visit to Lawa. He thought, I don't even have to go to a third world country. All I have to do is go to the Tom Bradley terminal and it's the same kind of situation. You should hear his comments. Listen to the County Board of Supervisors meeting from yesterday. It's on TV tonight, 10 o'clock. It's late, but he's very upset. Too late for me. Okay, thank you. Uh, anybody else uh, in this wonderful audience wishing to address this committee? Seeing none, we're adjourned. <laughs>